this week's video comes to you in four parts. Part 1. We like the Vlogbrothers, and I didn't have a lot of ideas for things to do in a video this week, and so I thought I might just chat about their videos from this week. This is a little bit of a thinky thoughts video, so I get it if you want to check out of this right now and come back another time. But that said, I'm not trying to go too deep here by any means, so I think it'll be okay. Part 2. Hank this week made a really thoughtful video about gene editing for intelligence, which is a super science fiction concept that I guess grows ever closer to science nonfiction. When I watched the video, the comment section was also hosting a pretty thoughtful discussion with folks sharing different perspectives. So if this is something you really want to come back to thinking about, I would really recommend this video. I've been thinking a lot about how much I love that Hank brought up how intelligence is something situational. Like, I know it's a lot more complicated than scientists have found five discrete types of intelligence that correlate with blah 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 blah, but I was a very book smart child with like negative one intelligence as soon as you put me in a social or extra emotional situation. I was really lucky and there were adults around who worked through this with me to help me understand that different things are harder or easier for different people. But I don't think that only people with less emotional intelligence would benefit from talking and learning about intellectual or other differences. I think all kids would. And I know I was shown a lot more grace about my social struggles than I would have been if I were not also traditionally school setting intelligent as well. I don't think that's okay either. So add that to the list of things I wish teachers and other folks who work with people had the bandwidth and support to consider more regularly. Part 3. I was also quite into John's video this week, all the way from mostly I just feel a lot to positive self-talk. I learned about this too in my elementary school social emotional behavioral lessons, so actually I guess the common thread in this video is childhood counseling? Wow. But anyway, as an elementary schooler, we called them affirmations, and I think because of our age, we were just told to essentially memorize a few that we thought would work for us. I was really resistant to these, whatever you call them, so I think that there's only one I still remember from that time. It's okay to feel the way you're feeling. As I've grown older, I have come to appreciate and use positive self-talk a lot more than child syntax did, because honestly, I do still struggle a lot of the time with being okay with how I feel. I should put that one back into rotation. But I've also found it very helpful to have affirmations from like external sources too. You've done hard things before, is something. John said, and something that some of my loved ones tell me when I'm having a hard time with something, and hearing it sometimes makes a world of difference. Obviously, I don't want to rely completely on others for affirmation, though, so I tend to also use things like song lyrics or writing I like. Two I come back to all the time the last couple of years are the opening line of Mary Oliver's poem Wild Geese, You Do Not Have to Be Good, and a line from the song Losing Touch by The Killers. I ain't in no hurry. So I can go read that poem or listen to that song or write down those lines and think about where they come from whenever I need it. It's a way to talk positively to myself when I'm still having trouble doing that on my own. If you've got any thoughts or perspectives on positive self-talk, I'd love to hear about it, but I understand if you don't and thinking it's hard right now, I get it. I really don't expect you to do any extra. Absolutely no pressure here. Part four, I have a challenge idea you can think about when you get back to thinking. Last week I mentioned it's Radish Time's postcard video series, and I was thinking that I would love to see what you'd come up with for a video postcard. You could use her series as inspiration, or if you have a different interpretation of what a video postcard is, I'd be super into that too. This definitely wouldn't be something you have to do right away, but if some future Alex wants to take on this challenge, I think that could be really cool. I guess maybe the outro is another part, I'm not really sure. But anyway, that's all I've got for now. Good luck with everything, Alex. You've done hard things before. The work you're doing is going to be good enough. You've got this. Let me know if I can help. See you soon, friend.